if your only concern is when moon, right? When, how do I get my Lambo? Or how do I get a 300% return in the shortest amount of possible time? Then chances are you're gonna get harmed in these markets because you're not really tracking them properly. And I've seen it happen over and over where people are investing in meme coins or things that have no real utility or function, but they're doing so because someone somewhere convinced them that it was gonna be worth more money later. That's dangerous, and that's, uh, generally speaking, going to be harmful to the consumer. In the markets, they say, don't be a greedy pig, right? Uh, understand why you're getting involved in something. Understand how to navigate it. It's been my experience that if you're investing in cryptocurrencies for the wrong reasons, you'll get burnt. And if your cryptocurrency or your project isn't actually producing utility, something that is actually usable by everyday citizens or by some aspect of the market, then chances are you're going to get burned because there's really nothing supporting the value of that cryptocurrency. There can be no revolution if it's not sustainable. If people can't make money doing something, if there's no incentive to do so, they won't do it. So let's be clear. Everyone who's participating in the cryptocurrency markets to some degree needs to benefit from it or they won't participate. Human beings tend to do things for an incentive. I think currently, uh, Anyone who bought Bitcoin for like 96% of the days it's existed is net positive right now. There's only a few days where if you could have bought it where you wouldn't be net positive. But that's besides the point, right? Because the, the truth is eventually you'll stop referring to the new technology through the lens of the old technology. You'll stop looking at Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies based on how much fiat currency that gives you. And instead you'll start to look at them by what they actually get you in terms of goods and services. And that becomes far more interesting and it's a more reliable metric. Everything in your life to some degree is about investing. Right now you're investing your time in having this conversation with me. Right? So when you participate in a market, you are investing in it. And the markets are designed to create different outcomes. In the US dollar system, it's designed to create the outcome of whatever the monetary policy of the US economy is at that time. And generally speaking, it's war and oppression are our biggest exports. Cryptocurrency markets are inherently different and they're designed to create different outcomes around sound money and permissionless systems that are available for anyone to use. When I invest, I'm not simply investing my dollars, but I'm investing my wherewithal and my attention and my energy into those markets. So yes, it's about investing, but not investing simply because you want more money later. It's about investing because you want the outcomes that that system is designed to create. I want a world in which everyone has access to basic financial tools. I want a world in which there isn't a small group of people that have access to all the money they want at any given time and the rest of us have to struggle to survive. I want a more egalitarian future and I think cryptocurrency is the doorway to that and so that's why I invest in cryptocurrency. Price is the least interesting part about cryptocurrency because again, it's simply referring to the new technology from the lens of the old. Right? Cryptocurrency, Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency, works at a fraction of a penny and it works at $100,000. It doesn't really matter what the price of a single unit is. What matters is what are the outcomes that that system is creating. Does it give more people access to basic finance? Great. Does it allow people to move money across borders more easily? Great. Does it allow for people to increase their spending power and hedge against runaway inflation? Great. If we want to talk about price, let's talk about price from a macro perspective. Every four years, Bitcoin is worth far more than it was the four years before. Right? And that's what we call a market epoch, and that is by design. It is deflationary across a four-year period by design. It's not an accident that it has this price performance. It's been engineered into it. So in that regard, price becomes very interesting. The idea that you can engineer a price into an asset class is fascinating and something that generally hasn't been possible before. But because we've invented programmable money, and programmable economic systems, we can get these outcomes. So in that regard, price becomes very fascinating. But if your concern is price change over the past 24 hours, seven days, or 30 days, then you're missing the big picture. It's, it, it's a bit like trying to study a human being by staring at its hair. It's not that interesting. Bitcoin maximalists are people who believe that Bitcoin is the only true cryptocurrency. They believe it is the only true blockchain, or at least the only one that needs to exist. Unfortunately for them, there are other blockchains and there are other cryptocurrencies, so uh, their position is demonstrably false. I'm a cryptocurrency maximalist in that I think cryptocurrency as a whole and these different networks are all very important and will all continue to exist. 
but Bitcoin maximalism is a bit dangerous in that it is another form of centralization, which even if it is the most wonderful asset, even if it is the most secure and the most important, it's dangerous in that if that one asset class has any problems, any failures, such as a bad Guinea coefficient, which it does have, it, it has um, the money and the Bitcoin ecosystem is not spread out very evenly, that problem alone could make the whole system fail. So to protect ourselves from that, we need to diversify and spread our value and our attention across the wider market, which has a much higher chance of succeeding long term. Whatever your feelings about Bitcoin, you can't deny that other cryptocurrencies do exist and that some of them are doing things that Bitcoin has not been designed to do and will most likely never do. So uh, Bitcoin maximalist, I mean, my heart goes out to you because I, I just think it's an, it takes an extra special kind of myopic thinking to join a movement about decentralization and then immediately centralize on something. I always found that funny and hilarious, but I wish them all the luck.